Right, everybody, it is time for your top eight of the AGE Open Series Players Championship. <laughs> I'm Mitch Leslie here, Colin Honeyman, of course, right beside me to right see. Uh, again, another elimination match, I suppose. Uh, pretty safe to put it that way now as we're heading into uh, a very standard single elimination eight-player bracket here. That's so right. We're going to cover one quarterfinal. We're going to hold one of the semis. So we'll do one quarter, semi, semi, grand final for you. So four more matches of flesh and blood. Ooh. Let's jump into it. Let's talk about our players first because there's a player we haven't really had a chance to uh, highlight, I think, as a, as, a, as a local player out here, Fuzzy Delp. That's right. Will be on one side of the table on Briar with a top eight in that previous AGE, 48 points in total. It'll be his first appearance on a feature match. Nice. Yeah, I, we brought this up earlier and we're really excited for Fuzzy because this is his kind of first foray into competitive play uh, coming to the AGE events. So this is really kind of help bolster his confidence and bring him to that competitive level. And he's actually going to nationals. So this is a great warm up for him. So uh, excited to see him on camera with Briar. Yeah, I've uh, had played one game against him and it was a great time. He's a fantastic competitor. Alexander Vaughn will be on the other side of the table from him, bringing the heat from Arizona right down here to SoCal. Uh, well, before we even kicked off with our AG Open Series, he was a known quantity as a prolific wizard player. Uh, feared on Kano. I think that Pro Tour Lille was a lot of people were looking out for him. He did turn up on that, that Kano list uh, and was pretty dangerous. He's on mm. Icelander today. That's right. Uh, that was a wonderful weekend when he just showed up and smoked everybody <laughs> on Kano. <laughs> uh, love that, love that, yeah. yeah. We, we all enjoyed that, those of us who love Kano. And of course, he's not the only Vore brother in that top eight. So keep an eye out for Matthew Vore on the other side of the bracket. There's always a chance we get a brother's war. Wrong card game, but they'll be going head-to-head -head in this as well. Let's talk pricing here because that's a pretty significant difference uh, between, uh, again, this sort of top eight and getting third and fourth here. $150 on the line mm. as far as this matchup is concerned. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty big one. Uh, I was saying later they're going to all pool the money and then play a Monopoly deal. For the all, I am here for it, we yeah. and we'll stream it. If they all agree, we'll stream it. I don't think that's going to happen, but that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I mean, we need to get players mic'd up <laughs> properly if we're going to stream that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. been like friendships have been made and shattered <laughs> and entirely. Shattered. We're really fueling the the uh, SoCal rivalry mill. Yeah, it's been too nice. So like, let's just shake it up yeah. and put some resentment and hatred. This in sportsmanship there. <laughs> makes me sick. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> nothing like a bit of monopoly deal to to bring us back to our most primal roots. On the topic of flesh and blood, though, we're, we're moments away from jumping into this matchup. It's a quarterfinal. I think our players are, yeah, they look like they're ready. They're even being held uh, before the game. It'll be Alexander Vore on Iceland of Stormbind going up against Fuzzy Delp, Briar, Warden of Thorns. Yeah, we've got two Briars, I think three Icelanders. So we might see this matchup again later, for sure. <laughs> uh, How many Lexi in our top eight? Zero. Absolutely zero. Ale Alejandro Cuevas falling just short, unfortunately, of the top eight after a great start today. A local from Kingslayer Games actually works at the store and is an excellent player. So, Alexander Vore, ha you've seen him on your screen many times if you've watched any of the official Flesh and Blood coverage. A well-traveled competitor in the space, uh, always a wizard player. Um, one of the first to really start pushing the boundaries of what Icelander can do. He didn't obviously come up with a bull lander kind of style, but, uh, you know, Last month he played Bravo though. Yeah. Okay, so he's yep. he's an all rounder. He can just play decks and be good at them. Um, and that's that's been the fun part of this whole series is seeing a lot of different players bring a lot of different decks. Uh, I think our winners throughout the year we had seven different winners on seven different heroes, yeah. um, which is pretty awesome. Uh, and I think uh, once once Alexander and his brother started showing up, I think the competition definitely. Stepped up a bit and people started sweating a little bit more because the uh, heavy hitters from out of town were coming in. Yes, yeah, SoCal gets very territorial like that. Uh, obviously, there's uh, plenty of love shared between us, but once we hit the battlefield, none of that is lost. So Alexander Vore's list features uh, an individual Aether Wildfire, one of the players that has always had like a, one of these copies floating around in the 80, and three copies of Sigil of per Permafrost, excuse me. Uh, so oh, nice. And a, the that one for four sort of defense reaction that will uh, enable you to inflict frostbites equal to the damage you deal uh, next time it comes in. Uh, also, yeah, the Arctic Incarceration, three of those are at blue, which is not a choice for everybody, just given that it's, uh, you know, only a two and not a three block here. 
they're the cards to really look out for. It's what kind of sets Alexander's list apart from many others. We're going to start uh, with a bit of a filter here. It'll be a corner peak activation. Yeah, over on Fuzzy's side, it looks like a pretty standard uh, Earth Briar, you know, fast and hard kind of deck. Nothing too spicy, I Couple don't think. Premeditates, I guess. Premeditates is cool. Yep. Sigil of Suffering. He's got the Meeps in there. Yeah, Meeps. Can't, don't leave home without the Meeps, that's for sure. Everybody loves a Meep. So, coming in, Rabble, revealing the Command and Conquer. Four go again. Briar stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah. Does does Alexander have warmongers in his deck? He does have he does. warmongers. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see when that comes out because that's uh it, it it can be punishing. Like what we've noticed and we saw it in the Chris Yali game early today on stream is that Chris was playing a pretty mid range approach, having to block with a couple of cards per cycle and was really just like throwing a four attack and then coming in with, with Rosetta and then mm. the occasions. So it didn't affect him too negatively here. Ravis Rabble comes in, it's gonna get some damage done. So we're gonna be creating an embodiment of Earth token. Easy, you know, just take the life. <laughs> That's how you win these games. Oh, he blocked a little bit, okay. Yeah, <coughs> we had uh, eighth ice vein thrown there, which is definitely something fuzzy did not would not have wanted to see come back across the table at him on a subsequent turn cycle. We might still see it anyway. So we're pitching here to our Grass the Ark Knight. We're gonna create a rune chant token. And of course we have some float here, so more to be done. Come in with a swarming gloom veil for four. Fuzzy being a true sportsman, showing the cards to Alexander, who probably is very familiar <laughs> with all of them. <laughs> yes, but I believe I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with this one. Thank you, there, Fuzzy. Yeah, there's quite a lot of text on some of these. Cards. Quite curious to play them upside down for your opponent. I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare. I need to read them too. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> we get another ice vein for this block. So Fuzzy is uh, at least forcing Alexander to part with some of the more frustrating uh, disruption. And hey. Why not finish off with a snatch? Gets a, even a nod of the head there from Alexander, like an inclination, some respect off it. He's like, oh, I'm going to have to block this, I guess? Yeah. Do nothing on my turn? Yeah, you love it when they block with the ice vein because... <laughs> get, get him out of the deck. <laughs> Seven more to go. Seven yeah. more to go, Seven Colin. More, yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's, that's why you run nine, so you can block a couple. No iron rot here. Mm. It's actually metacarpus node, uh, which means that this is a lot harder to block. Now, will Fuzzy be... Uh, encouraged to to do anything after the fact. No, it's just to get him an Arsenal card, but still something that has to be respected. And Vor says, okay, is it a problem to give two cards and not advance my game plan much next turn? We're about to find out. Yeah, I feel like you kind of take it. It's take just an it. Arsenal card. I think this early, you, you want to be able to... He already blocked two cards. That'd be pretty yep. rough. Yeah, again, like if you ever can get Iceland and block with three cards, you are you're loving life because she probably... Can't do uh, yeah too much more. Hated it. Yeah. <laughs> Hates it. <laughs> Two cards a turn cycle. She's built for that. She's more than happy to to present these blocks. So it will be an encase here. Fused. Ooh. Now, nice. How much do we how much do we mind this uh, as Briar? So obviously, if this is fused, which it is, and it deals damage to a hero, will freeze that hero and all equipment they control. So you can't play or activate that uh, equipment. That means that the grasp of the Ark Knight, and I guess the Snapdragon Scalers would be turned off. It's an attack reaction, right? So, but it can't, can't be activated. So I assume that would be... Yeah, I think it's... It, or yeah, it's an activation. Yeah, because it's a reaction. Yeah. So he, he freezes it. Yeah. And then he won't get an embodiment token. So it's pretty good. True. I uh, I like this. I'm glad that this one's it doesn't coming stop, back in. Does it stop triggered abilities? Because you're not actually... Ac you're not activating Briar. Uh, well, when it attack freezes is. that hero... Yeah, fair question. That can't be played. Oh, no, I guess probably not. I think yeah. if it is just a triggered ability, it, it still works. So I take that back. Uh, <coughs> somebody will correct me in the chat in three, two. <laughs> there we go. Fuzzy Smith, did he miss the snatch draw? No. Really? He may have not have arsenaled it. But, yeah, maybe he missed the... That? Oh, there's no way. Oh, he did, apparently. Okay. I think that might be what they're talking about. Well, table right now, but I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm not looking at any Arsenal here for Fuzzy. Mm. Um, so you may be right. Okay, so opting not to, uh, which I think was that Command and Conquer, so it's a reasonable candidate for heading into the Arsenal. Fuzzy definitely losing some value there, and still getting to force a bit of damage down Alexander Paul's throat. So getting seven for that turn cycle has to feel okay, but there's a question of what we do about this. We have Arcane Barrier 3 on board. 
uh, or at least yeah, enough to sort of eat this up with a blue. It looks like a blue in hand there, but do you want to give the force of nature up? It is, which I believe that is. We'll see in a moment. Yes, yeah, WF with wildfire. There is a singleton wildfire in this list. Something that Alexander Vaughn has actually been doing for a long time. Uh, it might you could almost consider it like as like a signature of his. I'm sure other players do it, but every every Iceland on deck list, I feel like I've seen. We're hearing that because Fuzzy did not draw off the Snatch. The Snatch is actually a must trigger. It's not a may trigger. But the Arsenal choice is optional. So Fuzzy had to draw the card, but was not able to pocket it in the end. Again, uh, Fuzzy's first feature match uh, here, and he sort of, as he sort of discussed it. So yeah. It's, it's uh, rough when the, nerves, yeah. the lights are on and people are sitting there staring at you, and uh, you know you're on stream. It, it is not easy, so we always appreciate uh, these players coming on stream and uh, playing for us. Yeah. So, an Enlightened Strike. This is Fuzzy's Enlightened Strike. It's always tricky when you've got uh, a hero that plays on the opponent's turn and then a very courteous opponent who presents his attack actions upside down. <laughs> because that could definitely be an Icelander card here. Whose card is what? Right, was that Emeritus from Arsenal here? So Fuzzy yep. is on the hook for four. Takes it. Angry Professor, as I like to call it. Mm. That's what it is, really. Now, there's still the question of how we respond to this Enlightened Strike, which presumably is five go again. What do we do here? Looks like we take it. We have not moved to the blocking step yet, but... Oh, yeah, I think he was waiting to draw the card... He waning mooned fuzzy. That's what happened there. So, just the war mongers put in front. What a nice little generic three block. Don't see them very often. Too too good. <laughs> Box for three. That's too good. I, I think I was saying to Joshua Myers, it could be a red two block and still have a place. Yeah, it, it definitely would have a place. It would be less easy to slot into almost. So that turn was a uh, sorry. He strike for five. And yeah, he strike for five and he drew the card, so. Yeah, that's fair. I think he had to pitch pretty heavily there to the arcane barrier to not have himself frozen stiff. We have now embodiment of Earth popping. So a window here for Alexander Vore to act. Yeah, wizard, wizards love this. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of that. But I sometimes it will take a tunic oh. counter at the start. Ah, oh, it's uh, okay. That's not what you want to see at all. That's exactly why <laughs> wizards love it. They're like, cool, I'm going to tax Sometimes you do turn. want to get Icelander to, to sort of, for you want to force a hand. So mm -hmm. like you have your tunic, you take tunic and see what they do. Um, okay, so yeah, Channel Lake Frigid comes down, taxing every action Fuzzy looks to take and also inflicting him with a frostbite here. Um, the antithesis to what Briar really wants to do. And we'll be looking out for how long Alexander can keep that in play we have a coronet peak here, so Alexander can pitch that reliably. And playing Channel Mount Heroic on your opponent's turn is so disgusting for so many reasons. The primary reason is that you don't gain a flown counter until the end of your turn. So Alexander Ward does not have to pitch ice on, on, on Fuzzy's turn, just no. during his next turn. Yeah, you get that extra turn. So even if you don't have the ice, which you probably will, you still get like two turns out of it, which is pretty. The, extra, the free turn of yeah. value right is... Yeah. Against a Briar who can't like throw an attack before being afflicted by that, mm -hmm. and Fuzzy says, "Well, right, I've got a Channel Mount Heroic in my hand here. Uh, do I find a way to get that into the Arsenal? How do I put pressure? I've got a Lightning Surge in hand, not Arsenal, which feels not very good. It's just, well, I'm I'm throwing it. So we have four here. It does not have go again. You're pitching, and we are over pitching, uh, I suppose, into this, right? Oh, there's a sorry, there's a Frostbite. Excuse me. So it is a two cost." Uh, mm -hmm. Zero for four without go again here as we pay through the frostbite token. Yep. Channel Lake Frigid, it's rough. <laughs> and we, okay, are pitching to cover the waning moon. So Fuzzy is basically conceding his turn cycle here, seeing the CLF come down. It's not It's not so much the Channel Lake Frigid. It's actually that second, that, that frostbite that gets created by it being revealed from Arsenal. That's what honestly even hurts more on this particular turn. Being taxed isn't good. Briar has ways to fight through it. Hey, you still get to do damage. You still get yourself an embodiment, which may or may not be relevant. Uh, Alexander, if you send some of those uh, attack actions over, it might find a place, which we have Finals Fighting Spirit, Command and Conquer, Wounded Bull, all in the list here for Vore. Classic. 
Right, Aether Hail. Can become for four. So it's an Aether Hail, the red variety. And now Fuzzy is playing on, on <laughs> having to defend himself on two on two turns, back to back. Yeah, pitching the Insidious Chill, so Lake Frigid will be around another turn. I feel like it will be out for another turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you have to price in almost inevitably a Frostbite yeah. when it's your turn again. Uh, because again, you create begrudgingly, you created an embodiment. Uh, it's almost like Alexander Vore almost like wants to take damage. Yeah. To s he wants that embodiment to be there. He wants there to be uh, a ledge for him to play from at the start of Fuzzy's turn. So this will be a Wany Moon on Alexander Vore's own turn. So it only represents two Arcane. We've already had our Tome of Harvest, I guess, pitched to try and eat three or four of that Ether Hail's damage. Yeah, I mean, the advantage of being able to respond to the embodiment breaking getting that frostbite in before they do anything like ensures that it really has an impact. I think sometimes if you catch them in the middle, they're actually like, well, you know, I didn't have anything left to do, so it doesn't matter. It goes away. This is why Briar is still playable in, in Classic Instructed. Icelander is the reason for it. My goodness. That'll be it. Fuzzy says, all right, hey, would He's you like, like to oh, play yeah. again? Would you like to keep playing? Yeah, this is Alexander Vore's oh. game, and Fuzzy is just here to witness it until uh, the, the lake thaws and he can go do something else. I've got to say, though, having Dyadic Carapace really is amazing in this matchup now because yeah. having AB3 and two of that AB being pretty natural, mm -hmm. uh, just having to bring in the, the sort of crown of dichotomy to, to make sure you get to three is great. You don't have to worry about, like, uh, quill hand, you know, or, or, or anything like that. <laughs> I've seen Briar play Rusted Relic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, whatever they can <laughs> to sort of eat some of this arcane. Because Briar, if she's forced into, like, a more mid-range game plan, like, maybe a single attack action per turn, like, she can play that way. You yeah. can't be expecting Snapdragon Scale is here, not when CLF is in play. So this is probably it, right? Just a, a snatch? I would I would assume so, yeah. Um, yeah, and the... the Carapace is also great in this matchup because you can block for two on one of the big attacks as well yep. uh, and keep that around uh, because it has temper, probably not blocking with it again yeah. after that. But, you know, the two life plus the AB2, it, it's pretty great. It's it's crazy. It's a legendary that's kind of so basic, but that it, it's almost busted. Yep. You know, yeah, it's, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's, very, it's very vanilla, I guess, in what it does. It doesn't reinvent the wheel, but in terms of that's kind of what... I really needed. Mm -hmm. You go up from playing Aether Ironweave, which was a one block that did give you resources, but generally Bri doesn't need them that badly. Two resources is also kind of weird. You maybe want an extra one mm -hmm. on Rosetta Thorn, which is why we saw Tunic in some matchups. But yeah, it really, it's a missing piece here. Ooh! Sigil Permafrost coming out. Okay. So it's a one for four defense reaction that says if it's fused. Oh, was it fused? I don't think it was. Okay, it might be. I mean, still an elegant way to eat uh, up this attack. Still costs Vore two cards, but uh, one of them he'll keep in the deck. I'm going to pass over to... Is this still Fuzzy's turn? Did he draw up? Uh, he did. Yes, okay. So, th sorry, this is... Yeah, it's this not the way that I turn. Um, ooh, it looks like Channel Lake Frigid will be going away. Uh, yeah, and Ice Vein in pitch here. I mean, Alexander Vore drew up, a, I guess, a hand with no ice cards? Well, it's weird because... Sigil of Permafrost, two Ice Fanes, and a Frost Hex, right? Yeah, the Frost, well, the frost Hex is an ice card. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, that's an ice card. Uh, hmm. Well, I suppose, why well, he needs two Ice Cards, right? He's going to have two Float Counters. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the issue. I was curious why he didn't fuse the Sigil, but I forget what the fuse on the Sigil does. Uh, it means that you will create Frost Bites equal to the next instance of damage you deal. Oh, gotcha. So maybe not relevant at that part of the turn. Yeah, Fuzzy was just throwing one attack and then passing. Just unnecessary. No frost takes to benefit from them popping or anything like that. So no damage represented from right, the frost right, right, right. All right, five. And your waning moon coming in after that as well. Earth Law Surge in the pitch. Fuzzy paying the tax on the Yeah, still has thing. to pay just still has to deal with that tax here. So I think that I think that was. I think he took five. Oh, okay, gosh, gotcha, yep. No worries. I think. Maybe took four. Yeah, it took four and uh, paid two. Okay. Now, Waning Moon. I think this is always an interesting juncture because it's it's psychological, actually. When you play... Big shout out to Nathan Crawford. Um, 
Man, talk about Briar Expert running Rusted Relic at last US Nats. Uh, <laughs> that, that's great. I mean, if anyone's going to do it, buddy, uh, you. I mean, Nathan brought this incredible mid range Briar deck into our last Goliath Warner, which was a ton of fun to watch. And then unfortunately, he was felled by his teammate. But you g- psychologically, you get to a point in the game against Icelander when you're about to drop below her life total for the first time. Mm-hmm. And you tell yourself, should I allow this? Because I started with more life than her. And everyone tells me that being at less life than Icelander means I've lost the game. Now, this is like obviously not not intuitively true, but mm-hmm. it's something that you think about. Like, hey, we're not trading evenly if I'm going below her life. That means I'm you know, losing out on a term cycle somewhere. So, yeah. both bear in mind, Gorganian Tome into Channel Mount Heroic. Nothing in the arsenal for Alexander to, to mess this up. Hey, create an embodiment of lightning. You could not ask for a much better setup term. We've got embodiment of lightning. We've got a card in arsenal. We've got Channel Mount Heroic deployed. Fuzzy is ready to go guns blazing. Why is he... Swinging his sword. Oh, I got something left over, right? I think you maybe wanted to pitch the Bramble Spark away. He just wants doesn't want to have extra cards in his hand, right? Mm. I, you IP one yourself essentially, like. But couldn't he? Maybe I mean, if he has an attack action in Arsenal, then. What are you saying that he should he should throw it? He and should then play it because then he could get the. And he could get the, the extra the damage. Arcane, yeah. It's Maybe he doesn't have an attack action, which Maybe would not. really be unfortunate for yeah. his uh, first Channel Mount heroic turn of the game. Well, getting a sync for this doesn't seem awful, in fairness. But yeah, sure, like you want to make use of the Channel Mount heroic, like you, the, I, man. I mean, if you're getting plus three and you're leaving an attack action, I can't, I can't imagine you do that because, like, an Ars- Br- Bramble Spark Arsenal seems like a completely reasonable thing to do. Yeah, right. No, he must not have an attack yeah. action in there, which is pretty unfortunate on this turn. I'm, cu- yeah. I mean, I guess you just have to play it and hope that you get it because. Holding on to it is not going to be any better, really. So, uh, Alex coming back says, Thank "Give me you. a card." Okay, Fuzzy says, "Right, well, I mean, this is <laughs> this piece now. Yeah, if you had Findle Spring Tunic, you could just give him the Tunic card. It's so good. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't have Arcane Barrier, so that's a concession you have to make, and maybe that could have consequences. But still, <laughs> uh, maybe it costs too much. Quite possibly here. Yep." Ah, oh, well, it's a force of nature. Yeah, well, that answers yeah, your okay. question. No, you get a force of nature fused on a channel mount heroic turn. You've also shown a blue card on that fuse. So Alexander Fuller thinks, I mean, how do I re- stop that? I don't. I'm probably just going to throw three cards at this. Next, first attack. Presumably, presumably, it's like a four power attack, right? Uh, so that goes up to eight. Yeah, it's Earth or Bounty. Oh, that's CLF. Yeah. Fuzzy says, well, maybe I get some damage here. <laughs> Oh, God, he did it again. Again, I mean, look, depending what Alex, uh, Alexander Vall parts with here, like his ability to keep that channel like frigid in play will, will be under... Oh, Autumn's it. touch. <coughs> it's a five. Yeah. So, pretty good. Okay. Throw it in here. So, was that nine, right? Nine go again? He Not that you can do anything with the extraction. Uh, yeah, nine go again, draw a card on hit. Pretty good. You Four. know, just pretty good. We'll see shields down. Fuzzy, I mean, why not just pay the one, right? Three cards in, uh, yeah, okay. And Alexander Vore's hand here. So Fuzzy probably gets a draw a card here. Unless Alexander Vore's ready to give up a coronet peak, but I'd be very surprised without the case because that's how you keep your CLFs around. But it's us, it's a three card block one way or another, which definitely means that that CLF just goes bye bye at the end of Vore's turn. Yeah. Take it. Takes it. He came here to play. All right. Nine. Not block. <laughs> nine go again, draw a card. This allows. Yeah, this allows Fuzzy to. He's pay the one. Re- okay, so he does pay the one resource into the winding mill, which is interesting because if you draw a red, you can't can't come in with a Rosetta Thorn. So. Um, yeah, the, the paying the one resource is interesting because if you draw. Oh, a he token, took one arcane from the Force of Nature, I think. That has an arcane damage on it, right? Force of Nature, no, it's Bramble Spark. Oh, is it? Force of Nature gives you plus one on your next attack if you fuse it. Oh. Yeah, like, so, he, so Fuzzy pays... The, I guess Fuzzy's not intending to do anything with the next card. He wants to arsenal it, so have a bigger turn. Uh, all I'm saying is that if he leaves that one floating, right, uh, you draw, like, an, a zero for four off the top, then it doesn't seem bad. You pay into it with that and put more pressure down. But Fuzzy is the prior player. Is it 10 from the Force of Nature Fuse? So Force of Nature Fuse is plus 1. I it's think a blue items touch. So should, five be, should be 9. 5, six, seven, eight. Or Mount Heroic is plus 3? Yeah. 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 Force of Nature Fuse is giving you plus 1. 
The base it's a base five attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alex in the think tank. Yeah, I guess like you know, Vor is trying to decide. Well, okay, if this is anything, if this is better than a red, if it's a red, it goes in pocket. If it's yellow or above, it could. It probably you know, depending on what it is, it could fuel a Rosetta swing. Um, we have two Earth cards crucially in pitch. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And if not for this channel, like Frigid, I would think that Vor would be in a pretty compromising situation. Like, yeah, I mean, it's still great timing for him on this, but it give you the sink to preserve life and still, yeah, you you want to <laughs> you want to arsenal a card and you want to pitch to Coronet Peak. Okay, here it is. Ooh, Fuzzy Delve has a look. He has an action point to play with here. And how do you make best use of it? You cannot uh, pitch to grass and do a cheeky little extra Rosetta. You cannot play it. Yeah, it's, it's got to go in the pocket there. So yeah. it's either a red or a utility card that maybe Fuzzy doesn't feel. He, he might just want to play off five cards as, as often as possible, but he should expect to be under the, the tax of Channel Lake Frigid another turn cycle. And yeah, and maybe even Cornette's Peak too. Uh, what is his hand? We've got... You got a sigil of suffering. Sigil. That's not overload, is it? There's no way. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the old. The old. Got another autumn's touch. Maybe a rabble in hand. Yeah. That's unclear. Still, you can probably get some value here from this, <coughs> this channel. Sigil of yeah, sigil of suffering is an interesting one here. Uh, pulse of candle hold. I think that is a pulse of candle hold. Yeah. Not sure what that second card is, so we'll find yeah, out. Not the best hand for a, a Channel Mount Heroic follow-up. No. Fuzzy seems like he's drawn some weird... weird Relatively resource-dense, in fairness, which is kind of yeah. nice. But here's your Coronet Peak to start us off. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> make it a pay, you know? Yeah, absolutely. He's got the Ice Crown and the, you know, view of the Ice Lake. <laughs> it costs you. You need to buy a permit for that, that particular trail. <laughs> so Blizzard on the Blizzard in the pitch zone here. Pitch, yep. We just throw away our. <laughs> Interesting. So instead of paying one, he just gets rid of it. He doesn't want that in the deck. Yeah, it's I feel like if he gets to the second uh, cycle, I feel like there probably won't be much more attack actions left. So probably just a dead card. Yep. If it lines up, it's good. If it doesn't. Alexander gets another crack now. As our embodiment of Earth is popping. What is that? Is that there's, there's a sink below in hand potentially there. Yep. Oh, he's got a nimbleism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Oof, this, you this can create effect. an embodiment of lightning. It depends what's in that arsenal. Yeah. Oh, it's a premeditate. Right. What's in the arsenal, sir? Chance to respond to this. The pulse of candle hold was pitched, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh Yep, because obviously pre at rotate now cost. Yeah, it costs one, and then he's got the nimbleism, and then whatever's in Arsenal, which we did not see. Hopefully it's an attack action. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the only, yes. Uh, he didn't throw it last turn, so it's probably, yeah, it's probably a red, otherwise I thought he might have tried a Rosetta. I don't know if that's good enough value, really, paying two for your weapon swing. Yeah. That doesn't get buffed by Chanama Heroic. I'm not sure what goes through a Briar player's mind, really. I... It's uh, <laughs> so exactly. It's a it's a different world to me. Yeah, no, it it's less burr than it used to be, but oh no, it's a lot of burr right <laughs> now because it'd be frosty. Get this guy by a half stat. Get this guy a, a, a cup of Java juice. So some of the hot bean juice. Yeah, yeah exactly. Alexander might like w like. There's also a case we made for for maybe waiting and, and forcing. If you have something that's truly disruptive, getting fuzzy to commit more to the board before crippling his turn mm -hmm. could be even better. You know, these cards that would otherwise be used as pitch to pay through frost bites. Well, hey, if we get you know that nimbleism now, you know, committed to the board, all of a sudden, you know, fuzzy has a little less to work with. It's an important decision here for the Icelander player because there's a very it's a tightrope being walked in the Briar player is really threatening to break the bonds here of a lot of this taxing. So Briar still has the lead in in life. Having like a semi successful channel mount turn, like getting to getting to hit hard with that autumn's touch and, and draw a card was was nice. It's a force of nature. You're kidding. Okay. 
Embodiment created. No fuse on this, but still threatening to draw a card if Fuzzy hits. Because in this attack will get buffed by six, and Vor is in the tank. Is this just is this just the psyops playing? I think, I think he's just making embodiment of lightning. <laughs> yeah, he's just making embodiment <laughs> of lightning. And making Alexander uh, Vor. Like, he's gotta know. He's gotta know. Like you can't do anything else here. Yeah, well, yeah, he's going to chain like frigid. It's just a, it's just an interesting play that he's trying to... He's like, <laughs> you can't what? deploy an attack, actually. You what can't fight I, for the damn thing. What have I missed? Is oh. he about to do something incredible? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cost minus one comes in for four go again. Um, How about them apples? Yeah. yeah. Resolves? <laughs> yeah. And pass. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's that's a rough hand. Well, the fear of God in him, don't worry about it. Yeah, for a second. Interesting. I mean, I guess, you know, you arsenal the force of nature, hoping you drop to have another kind of pop off channel mount heroic turn, but I mean it's not that the hand that Fuzzy drew up. Premeditate, pulse of candle hold, force of nature and arsenal. And sigil of suffering. Absolutely like. horrendous. <laughs> this is pretty bad. Horrendous. Pretty bad. I mean he's And it's a stumble on. that may represent a real inflection point in the tempo game here. Yeah, totally. I mean if if he doesn't get a single card out of the I mean, I've, I've got to be honest. I mean, <laughs> when I played Fuzzy recently, his first hand was so horrendous, I actually swung into him and got two Dawnblade counters because he had this pen that just didn't block him. <laughs> <laughs> Looks to me like... Uh, we tried to filter his hand and ended up with like uh, three Tome of Harvest in his hand uh, when he tried to come back at me on, on turn one. Mm -hmm. and he <laughs> So he just passed. I'm like, oh, you're, my, you're dead. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I've definitely seen him be afflicted by some poor luck. Obviously, good luck got him here uh, alongside uh, some great gameplay, but that's a tough hand to try and make a stand on. Yeah, I mean, that's what sets apart the best players is how they navigate when the luck runs out. Uh, if he can hold... You know, hold true, make some good decisions where he can, and uh, find his way back into this. He's not out yet, but it's he's in a precarious situation for sure. Okay. <coughs> Eight to hail with your end case pitch. Could could be a lot worse. That's interesting. He's keeping so many cards in hand. Something, yeah, something is straight chilling in Arsenal too. So, again, uh, it's still a bit concerning, I think, looking at your Briar opponent with uh, a full grip plus an embodiment of lightning. You know, there's a lot they can do from that position. Plus, that Dragon Scalers is still up. Fuzzy doing some quick maths. 22 minus 4 is 18. So, let's keep track of home. Yeah, so, like, uh, like that Lightning Surge feels way better with that embodiment of lightning in play. It doesn't feel like this awkward card you have to, like, finagle into your arsenal to yep. sort of be above right on. And Waning Moon here, also probably within expected parameters for Fuzzy. It's a question of do I preserve life or do I try and go for it now? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think when he didn't pitch an ice card first, he's thinking Channel Lake Frigid is going away, so... And that's three CLFs gone because there's one in pitch on that turn. So yeah, no so more CLFs until the bottom of the deck for Alexander Vore. Yeah, absolutely. So that's pretty pretty huge for Fuzzy right now because that's really been holding him back. I think it he's likely i mean he pitched a mount heroic early too so he's got one more coming somewhere in the deck but then the other one in the second cycle so that will be you know what he's looking for i mean it always feels like it comes every couple turns uh -huh. so uh, we're likely to see it soon but you know for now we'll just take the damage and get go again it's awkward because you, if you play Scar after the Lightning Surge, you won't have go again. So it doesn't feel good having double go again and losing that embodiment. Yeah. But that tells me straight away, Fuzzy's just going to tuck that Lightning Surge away or, or end the sort of chain with it. So it's fine. doesn't feel amazing. Fuzzy doesn't want to be lower in life, <laughs> but that's just the way things are right now. Yeah. And it reveals a minimum of information, I think, to, to Vor. Um, you know, it probably says actually, Ah, oh, he's like wasting his embodiment of light. You know, wasting with air quotes. Yeah, so yeah. He yeah. must have plenty of go again. Yeah, he doesn't time. care enough to, or you know, he doesn't have to worry about it. So he's just gonna play this. If I was wondering what what what's next, yeah, what, what else has he got? Next, that he yeah. can just keep going with here. Am I looking at what's the top eight? The sixteen damage. Um, we can show you top eight real quick. Uh, just after this bot, we'll show it for you in just a moment. Oh, uh, Ice Bolt there coming out. There's your top eight here. Three Icelander, two Briar, uh, one Dromai, Fi, Navaya. Okay, Ice Bolt from Arsenal here and a Frostbite coming down. And this sink roller. Not bad. Yeah, uh, anything of that with a sink below. So 
decent time to part with that one. Two cards left in hand for Alexander Vaughan. Has to be expecting more to come, but just how... If this is like a very cheerio turn from Fuzzy, then this, this Frostbite is really annoying. Yeah, it definitely could be. I mean, it could prevent a whole extra attack. Um, but Vor only has one card, or two cards left. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. Yeah, no, he's like, I got blues. He's got a decent amount of blues in this deck. I think yep. they're like 17. So... Ah, uh, yeah. now... Okay, this this feels totally fine. Yeah. Follow up the Ravenous Rapper with a Rosetta Thorn Strike, pocket that Lightning Surge, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, 15 damage, easy. Yep, great to... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, great to obviously show a swarming off the top of the deck here. So Fuzzy, it's got to feel good about this. He knows this... <laughs> Yeah, this was a good comeback turn after a pretty disappointing last time. Yes, absolutely. Still above that like insta-kill range. We've gotten through all the channel like fridges for now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no other disruption on board. No Insidious. And I don't see any Ice Fan in handy for Alexander Vore. So it's not like on the next turn cycle he can just throw that at Fuzzy and, and mess with his hand. Mm -hmm. This is go time. Yeah, I think this is his window. Um, it's all about whether he sees it or if Alex can draw something else that can really mess up uh, Fuzzy in his next turn because it feels like Alex might not have his own turn. Yeah, I mean, yeah Alex <coughs> is under pressure now. The hand, the, the remainder of the hand is not good. It's a Polar Blast and like an Ice Bolt. Yeah, and he potentially he has another attack with Gogan and then Rosetta Thorn. So, I mean, we might be looking at, you know, 19 damage, which would be nuts. What a time to find a hand like that, especially after a very dodgy... It was bound to happen. You know, he had so many bad hands. <laughs> <laughs> the good cards were I mean, all just clumped up together. Uh, and it, it, it gets better because we're just going to pick this Swarming Gloomvale off the top mm -hmm. with a go-again card in Arsenal. Yeah, plenty to do next turn, that's for sure. If I ha could draw an advantage bar, I'd probably give it to the Briar here just mm. a little bit. Two card block is the question from Alexander. Do I just take the? Do I just preserve life here and try and buy some time to come across some more disruption? Not a simple decision by any stretch of the imagination. Vor's also considering, excuse me, the uh, threat density remaining in his deck. He's blocked with a couple of those Aether Ice Fans. He also knows he's a long way from that next Channel Eight, as he pitched it of his own volition. Yeah, hasn't set up much of a board state outside of that either. Uh, Frost Tech's getting pitched, and uh, I think Insidious Chill as well. So he's he's got to do this the hard way. Raw power. <laughs> All right, we are <laughs> taking it, everybody. Bam, seven right Ooh. to the dome. All right, asking the question of what's next. Do you, I mean, you can't, there's no way you throw this Lightning Surge and snaps, right? There's no way you get that freaky. Yeah, okay. we're not that freaky. That's good. <laughs> he could have, though. Like, if he did <laughs> four and four, <laughs> put him to, to one, one. Take him to one. I would be, yeah, that would be. That might be a little greedy. Be very rude, yes. But <clears throat> it could also, you know, potentially just give you that. I find that like Snapdragons is, gets better and better the longer you hold off using it, I feel. Yeah. Uh, not in every case. Uh, if you end the game with it still there, then it's probably bad, but. All right, what do we got here? Uh, swarming, we've got a Bramble Spark. And it looks like two blues here. So this is probably a turn where you can get both modes of Swarming turned on, two out of three modes at least. Mm. And you're probably going to be pitching for a Rune Chant. First Coronet pick, though, so we must we must deal with that. That is a Red Earth Law Surge, I think. So decent candidate to, to send away. Earth Law Surge, that's what I meant, yeah. So Fuzzy forgot to create the embodiment, but it's not it's not a beneficial trigger necessarily, so I think you'll have to, uh, yeah, you'll have to put it into play. Mm -hmm. So that's where, uh, that's Alexander Vore's springboard into the turn. Or, no, I mean, uh, okay, Judge there. He's happy with this to proceed as it was, so. Was it the Anthem Fuse Bramble spring? Spark. Fuse Bramble Spark, yeah, Anthem spring, spring being used there, rather. And the Lightning Surge comes in, so hey, Let's get a buff. Let's ping you for some arcane damage. Let's present a lethal attack. Ooh. I mean, you, you always got to count Storm Striders as potentially like six arcane damage. Yes. So it's always a question of can he do, you know, six plus ten. <laughs> and ooh, that's that's pretty tall order, I think, for uh, Icelander without, you know, 
Frost Texas and uh, Ice Eternal set up, so definitely not a comfortable spot. Oh, this is scary. I'm I'm scared if I'm Alexander Vore here. This is fuzzy looking, cool, calm, and collected. Because I what ended up going to Arsenal? Ice Bolt? Was it the Polar Blast? No, I think he, I think I just saw the polar look by. Yeah. D- does, uh, there's an emeritus scalding in hand here. <coughs> does Alexander Vore have the time? Arctic incarceration as well. A little late for that, I think. Mm-hmm. So now we get in the tank. This is the kind of scenarios where, like, we see a pr- quote unquote premature, uh, like, Storm Strider activation. Yeah, and I feel like Alex knows that he's got two cards in hand, and there you've got to assume <laughs> maybe one of them could be a blue, uh, if not both. So <clears throat> that's that's a really that's a tall order because that means he's trying to get around. What was that twenty two damage, which is not. Not the easiest thing to do yeah. without any of that board state. Definitely a tough spot. For really, him. really relevant that we're able to fuse a Bramble Spark for that extra one arcane coming in. It's a card that Vore can't be using to block. So has to pitch that away unless he just takes it. So that that split damage here is actually really annoying. Uh, the same could be said, of course, of a potential Rosetta Thorn swing with like a Rune Chant made up there. So here's your Ice Bolt. Let's give you a Frostbite. Let's try and slow this down a little bit. Let's try and put the brakes on this train before it starts to run away. You might be saying, take this damage. Don't I be any of it? Use my... Is that swarm? It's a swarming, of course. You had to follow it up here. So uh, you can take this and then swarming and swing that Rosetta Thorn. I think Fuzzy says, yep. Serve it up to me, baby. I'm taking it. Vor, okay. Uh, just maybe a decline on the Metacarpus node. Because technically it triggers every time you... You know, throw this every time. <coughs> Talishar, you gotta say no. No, I don't want it. Uh, in terms of the life total accounting, that's up to the players down there at the table. I think we're linked into whatever life counter app they're using. So we try not to get too swept up in in that, as the game state tends to advance while we're dithering over whether they're the right kind of life. We'll know when they do. <coughs> Sorry, Anthem Spring getting pitched here. To say, I will pay one for my swarming and then one for my Rosetta Thorn. Can he get out of this alive? I don't think he can get out of this alive. He's got two block on his crown, right? And one block oh, on his tunic. Yeah, okay, you have some block here. That's fair. Still not a good spot. No, I mean, <laughs> you still got <laughs> you still got eight damage coming after this. So, what's that? Eight minus three. That's five. That's five. That's what he's got. That's oh. what he's got. Oh. Anyway, this is Alexander Vore we're dealing with. This is not your garden variety Icelander main. We are talking cage free. No, free range. Organic. Fair trade. Serious business Icelander player. Okay, we're, talk, we're talking a 50% markup at MSRP Icelander. I think the life totals got fixed. Okay. Fuzzy, 11 here. No, wait, no, wait, no. All right, block with that single to the ice vein and the coronet peak, blocking five. Wildfire. Ah, uh, excuse me, yeah, wildfire. I'll get an embodiment. Alexander Vore has one card left. Oof. How do you stop eight damage with one card? <laughs> <laughs> you have the Quick, tuning. let me do... You have the tuning. Let me do the math. <laughs> you have a tuning to throw in front. Here comes... The Swarming Gloom Veil. This should just be three. It's just the one aura created this turn, right? So Three with go again, yeah. Three with go again. No embodiment of lightning here, so. It's an easy block for so Alexander. Yeah, he, I, think he's, I think he's safe. Because he can block two yeah. arcane. Yes, with the two float, yeah. Yeah, and he has the, the one box, block the one on tunic. the tunic. So I think he can go to one here, but he's not going to have a turn, which is going to be pretty rough. I think that's the Emerit. Is that the Emeritus Scalding <laughs> In hand, or did we think the wildfire was a scolding that might be more likely just based on the board? Mm. Very uncomfortable. We'll call it the squeaky bum time <laughs> for the Icelander. <laughs> As all matter of thorny apparatus are being trained on Alexander. Yeah, if it's a block for two, he's an it is. I think it's a block for two. Oh, that's, that, that does not feel good at all. 
Oh, you still survive. Yeah, yeah. It was a cold snap. So, okay, we get three blocked there and then throw the Rosetta in. Block the two arcane. Take two. Go to one. Ooh. Fuzzy Delp gets to turn around, wind up for another Haymaker to try and end this here and now. And Alexander Vaughn goes into the next turn cycle without an arsenal. He is going to be leaning on the contents of the hand he draws up at the end of his completely empty turn. And I can't see that it's supposed to be enough. How do you find 11 damage between Storm Strider's activation and a Waning Moon? Yeah. It's it's not a good spot. I mean, even with those two... The Sigil of Suffering makes a repeat... Uh, another appearance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean... Hold on to your hats. He's got a snatch. Rabble. Yeah. Tops are red. Never punished. Never. Fuzzy's just built different. Give this me two are. cards, sir. Yeah, hell yeah. Fuzzy holding it down for the SoCal region against the invading <laughs> Arizona <laughs> Vor Brothers. Uh, <clears throat> that's, it, you know, there's a real turn in this match. Fuzzy was in a really bad spot to begin with. It looked like he was just drawing, you know. That turn, not, not drawing off the yeah. snatch right or couldn't arsenal the card he pulled from there. There's some value lost there for sure. His uh, Channel Mount Heroic pass turn. Wait, is that <laughs> Sigil of Permaf... No, there's no, there's no Frost Text in place, so that Sigil is not... It's still a two-card block, senor. Yeah, this is pretty rough. Yeah, look, I've got to say, like... um. Hats off to Fuzzy. He's come a very long way in a very short time uh, as a player. Alexander Vaughn, a storied wizard in the flesh and blood world, is looking down the barrel of a loaded Rosetta Thorn and a whole arsenal of arboreal threats. <laughs> <laughs> and some glowy purple ones too. Because that is another swarming gloom veil into the next hand for Fuzzy. Wow. Yeah. This was uh, you know, played pretty well. I'm. It's, it's very interesting to me that Vor didn't get any board stayed out really, other than the the Channel Lake Frigate. Yeah, no Insidious chills, yeah. right? Yeah. I think Insidious chill could have been such a huge thing to just hamper any turn that he could fuse on. But I, it also feels like his arsenal was kind of off a lot. He didn't quite uh, have always have the disruption in there. S uh, the fusing hasn't happened all the time, so it's been a bit it's been a bit weird for Vor as well. I, you know, to be honest, I feel like any any time your deck gets checked and everything's sorted out, you gotta spend ten minutes shuffling your deck. Yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Because yeah. like I I feel like the cards everything's always, in order always come out weird. That's my main. That's my first stop on the Cope Express. To be fair, when I, <laughs> when I struggle, I like, oh, oh, just, I just rebuild the list. So that's yep. why I should have shuffled more and better. I don't pile shuffle because I think pile shuffle always gets me. <laughs> oh, really? Like yeah. that? Really? Because I feel like people do that when they're trying to really shuffle. Yeah, no, I, I know. Just, I and then every time I do it, I'm like, why are all these cards stuck together? <laughs> well, it is. Stoic. Jawline that could cut diamond. Fuzzy yeah. Delp. He's just, he's just thinking about... Like, Telling me to give you some give him some damn cards. Is, give me two. Is there any Chipotle left? Is, <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, like, how I, how I that Kazo really looking after six hours out there? Surely. <laughs> Surely still FDA regulation complying with. Surely. <laughs> We've got boy Sam O'Byrne there just feeling for his fellow Icelander brother here. The queso is still good. <laughs> Don't worry. Con I tried it. Confirmed. Citadel Permafrost here. That is a four block. Got to pay for it, though. Ozzy's like, look at me, boy. Look at me in the eye when I throw this rabble at you. Okay. Oh, he fuses. Okay. Okay. Fu okay. That's so fair. if if Vor can do any other damage, he can create some uh, frostbites. So but he has to storm striders to do that. Like so, I mean, it could just be a last ditch effort. If he if he can storm striders do some damage, give some frostbites. Back, yeah. Either way, he'll try to take some cards out of Fuzzy's hand, or uh, you know, prevent yeah, uh, prevent him from playing them. There's all, definitely so. some play to this for sure. Um, I think I think it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It, could, it could it could save him this round or the you know this like, uh, turn cycle. Fuse that. So we're blocking for four, and I I guess Vor has a priority window here um, to activate Storm Striders to play the damaging non-attack action to inflict the frostbites before Fuzzy's next attack, or perhaps he feels like he can wait. Yeah. Okay. Looks like he is slow rolling me. <laughs> 
We're look, it's the, it's, this is a really <laughs> important decision point. Yeah, no, this is this is either his last turn or it's not based on what he does next. <laughs> what? Just a staggering level of insight. <laughs> He's going to die, or he won't die. We're going back to people die if they kill it, are we? It's all come full circle. Fine, I'll just go eat some cakes. The, the fact, factually, <laughs> factually correct. Yes. Look, I thought he was just dead no matter what. Yeah. But now he's at a point where, like, he might be able to, to not lose, which, you know, you give Icelander a little bit of space. But, I mean, without... How about two more cards, Mr. Vore? Or what say you? Oof, and he's got those Snapdragons. Those are <laughs> real valuable right now. Is he just dead? <coughs> Snaps here? Yeah. Uh, pitch Rosetta. Their fist is already being extended. And Ooh. there it is. Fuzzy Delp holds the line for Southern California with a huge victory over Alexander Vore. What a great result from the local player here. And he's got to feel really good. He fights through two Channel Lake Frigid turns. Makes some really clever decisions, I think, in terms of allocation of resources and is able to overwhelm Alexander Vore, the latter who, like you mentioned, Colin, can't develop a insidious chill throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Does keep Channel Lake Fritter around for quite some time, but you need just just a little more than that. Fuzzy also great discipline, doesn't you know overextend with like a Snapdragon Scalers play early in the game, just says, all right, I see this slightly surge, it's going in my arsenal. And then I'm going to make it happen. Fantastic showing Fuzzy Delp now advancing into the top four of your AGE Open Series Players Championship. Let us now circle back to our top eight. That is not our top eight. That's our top eight. Bingo, bango. Oh It'll be Anthony Fan versus Fuzzy oh Delp. God. So Fuzzy, can the frosty reception continues for our Briar player. I and on the other side, I Peter Medensi. Like this game because we're going to watch it again. Another Vore brother <laughs> playing from the other side <laughs> of the matchup. And if we're lucky, we'll get a mirror in the finals. What say you folks? It'll be Matthew Vore, Peter Bedensik in Icelander versus Briar going head to head. Briar still out here, still kicking. Ah, does this event give Living Legend points? No. No. But don't you wish it did? <laughs> mm, wouldn't that be so nice? Not yet. LSS, hit us up. Yeah, we'll, we'll, give them, <laughs> we'll give points away posthumously. <laughs> Uh, look, that was a great show, and we're going to have to get Fuzzy in here for a chat. You know, he said it to us, he's, he's pretty nervous going into the game. Mm -hmm. I hadn't played a, a feature match before. There was obviously like a little bit of a, an issue with that, with his play there where he, you know, f forgets the trigger, but still able to come, uh, you know, come through for the win against a, a player like this. And I think, you know, it, it's a really important experience for Fuzzy to realize he can hold his own with, with some, of the, some of the best here, making it to the top four of the AG Open. This is someone who's able to qualify for our Players' Championship from one top eight. Yep. Uh, and then just like really consistent participation throughout the course of the year. So, you know, you don't need to be, uh, you know, you know, winning AGE to sort of qualify to make it here. What a time, though, to go on a tear right here at the pointy end of things. That, if you're going to do it, it should be now. <laughs> Another level of deep insight from Thank yours, you. truly. That's surprising. <laughs> surprising. So with that win, Fuzzy... Catapults himself into at least third or fourth place. That's two hundred fifty dollars right there. Charging, but of course, a win in those semifinals could Ooh. mean even more than that. Six hundred dollars for second place, and eleven hundred dollars for winning. Um, I agree. We'd all love to hear from Fuzzy. We'll give him a chance to, you know, collect himself and, and come on over the table. But uh, there we have it. You know, the Citadel of Permafrost, Permafrost there, excuse me, in in Vol's deck. You can see what it can do, but mm -hmm. there's no architecture set up around that. There's no frost hexes and Frankly, like I don't think you're on a frost takes plan against Briar anyway, right? You don't have to. Do you really Probably have to not. Plan? But Insidious yeah. Chill has got to be good. You know, I feel like you see that card, and you're like, I should probably try to play this as, <laughs> as much as possible. Oh, did you see one? I didn't see though. I just don't I, think you got I saw card. one, and he pitched it. So like okay. maybe he just didn't see the rest of them. But yeah, it, they both kind of had weird draws throughout the game. So I think it was kind of hard to navigate that. Right. But yeah, we'll be uh, take a short little break, and we'll come back. We're gonna talk to Fuzzy. All right, see you in just a moment. All right, we are back with Fuzzy Fuzzy. Great game there. Thanks. Uh, really, I, I'm interested to hear on your, uh, on your side of it, did it feel like the cards were just bad on both sides of the table? Because there were some um, interesting hands there. Well, I mean, he got Channel Lake Frigid out twice. Mm -hmm. um, there was both times I thought he was going to keep it out a third turn because mm -hmm. he pitched two blue cards and I wasn't paying quite enough attention. I was ready to have that up a whole nother turn. Uh, and okay. then it like went to graveyard and I was like, oh, okay, I guess nice. I yeah. 
do kind of get to play cards this turn. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he had those two early, but then it just felt like he wasn't able to develop a board state. And then, of course, you had, like, probably the most lackluster Channel Mount heroic turn I've ever seen. They've kind of been feeling like that today. Yeah. Um, I have some changes in mind I want to make to my deck list. Like, mm -hmm. right now, I think I just need a few more attacks in the deck mm -hmm. that I can really make use of that Channel Mount heroic. Um, I've been kind of tinkering with it, trying to get it in the best shape possible for today. Mm -hmm. And... It's doing okay so far. I'm not <laughs> complaining, but there's some changes that I'm ready to be ready to make before Nats for totally. sure. Totally. Uh, generally, going into like an Icelander match, what uh, what is like I'm less familiar with it. So like, what is their game plan that is really effective against you? And like, what is you you know what are you trying to do uh, if anything different than another hero? I definitely consider it a bad matchup for Briar. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Briar's cards want to be like played for free or like very specific mana mounts like i have channel my heroic which costs three any more and that's three cards out of your hand just to get it on the field yeah. let alone capitalize on it things like e-strike are really good in briar because you can turn any card into like an attack for seven or go again or draw but now with a frostbite or um channel like frigid mm -hmm. now e-strike costs a card and a resource again you're guaranteed now it's guaranteed costing three. Uh, Briar also has her embodiment of Earth, which has like a beginning of the action phase trigger, so mm -hmm. it can be responded to. So if they yeah. want to, and I have the embodiment of Earth out, they can respond to it right away to get some disruption in. Yeah. Like Channel Lake Frigid immediately. Like other heroes, I imagine, get to play one thing before the Channel Lake Frigid <laughs> yeah. comes down. Yeah. Not quite an option that I have. For sure. Um, so. I feel like I've been getting lucky today. You know, I've managed to win two games against Icelanders so Ooh. far, and that's a record for me. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, speaking of that, we do have the top eight, mm -hmm. and it's looking a little samey. you know? Uh, we're basically going to watch the same match three or two more or two or three more times, uh, depending on how these <laughs> shake out. Uh, I know that's Anthony's really running, like, a slightly different uh Icelander build or maybe no maybe Peter was I forget one of them told me this morning that their build was a little different but um I yeah. got to play Anthony in Swiss okay um and we even talked about the little match a little, talked about the match a little bit and I think that did help me prepare for this match against Alex nice. where I kind of knew what to expect knew what my power cards were I think there's a thing or two I'm going to try differently against Anthony um for the next round and hopefully it pays off um hopefully I can continue getting lucky <laughs> <laughs> you know it's luck's a part of it for sure uh we also read that you know you you did qualify for nationals congratulations are you taking briar to nationals as well uh, that's the plan nice all right yeah I'm definitely the only hero i have enough experience with to take really i mean comfort does a lot you know you were just in kind of like a high pressure stream situation which you haven't done before and it it can really throw you so you know being able to fall back on on some of that like natural like learning and just know yeah. what you're gonna do rather than be trying to figure out the most optimal thing all the time, I think is uh, is really useful for a lot of players. Um, uh, awesome. Well, I think uh, we're excited for the next couple rounds. Uh, I'm. I mean, it's gonna. <laughs> It's going to be the same thing, so I'm really curious how it shakes out differently. But yeah, Hopefully Matthew Vohr wins. That way I have lots of content I can watch to master <laughs> the Briar versus Icelander matchup. Exactly, yeah. This is just a uh, master class in, yeah. in how, to, <laughs> how to play Briar into Icelander or this vice is, versa. This is how we get Briar to LL. It's is you too. You get a lot of practice on her worst <laughs> matchup on stream. So everybody can see it. Yeah. And I mean, if the two of you can pull it off at Nationals, there you go. We'll, I'm sure a lot of people will thank you. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, it was great to talk to you. Uh, anything else? You want to shout out your podcast? Yeah. Um, we've got like 15 to 20 regular viewers each week so far. We just launched our podcast a month or two ago. It's more about design than competitive play. Oh, cool. So if you like the idea of like custom card ideas or what LSS might print in the future by reflecting on what they've done in the past, that's mm -hmm. generally what our podcast is about. And we try to keep things like pretty professional and structured. And I'm really proud of what we've been able to produce so far. Nice. That sounds awesome. I had not heard of it, so I will definitely check it out. Uh, excited to hear it. I, I love game design stuff too. So yeah. I'm excited to uh, see some content coming out in that uh, area. So Thanks, man. Congrats. Good luck on your next round. Oh, and, and you uh, can find it on like all the podcasting apps, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcast. Check it out. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back Thanks, in a everyone. few minutes.